welcome to East Kirkby for uh, the first video of year four of our restoration work to restore Avery Lancaster NX 611 to an airworthy condition. The start of this year really is uh, the breaking down of the fuselage at the transportation joint to the rear of the aircraft uh, to allow us to build a jig for the rear fuselage section. This winter has been heavily affected by the coronavirus um, which has meant we haven't had the funds to do a, a full winter restoration period uh, to restore the aircraft uh, and the, the section that we were hoping to do which is the rear section behind me. So we, we've taken the year to consolidate the restoration projects we've already done and uh, make a start on the jigs for the, uh, the next year of restoration which will be the complete rebuild of the rear fuselage section uh, just behind me here. I've been taking some, some video and some photos as we've been going along taking the aircraft apart and you'll be able to see them in a few moments time uh, with a bit of commentary to talk you through the, uh, the removal of the rear fuselage section uh, and all of the flying controls, fins, rudders, tailplane uh, as we go along. So with the main bulk of work this winter being the strip of the aircraft to facilitate the fuselage splitting um, at the rear transportation joint, uh, we wasted no time in actually getting uh, parts of the aircraft ready to strip um, for that fuselage split. The first bits that have to come off are the, uh, the rear turret. So the rear turret is held on by a series of nuts and bolts across the, uh, the bottom ring which is held into the fuselage onto the spun steel ring that we had made and fitted last year. So that comes out first, it's lifted out uh, through the top the uh, turret has to uh, to bend slightly or to manoeuvre slightly as it comes out to allow the uh, the bottom rotation joint to come out of the aircraft as well. So as that comes out, um, it can be lowered out onto a pallet um, and that makes the aircraft very clear at the back as you can see from the photos. After the rear turret's out, uh, John and Jerbs moved on to other parts of the aircraft, namely the fillet panels that go around the tailplane to the fuselage uh, and then onto the, uh, the tail fins and the rudders and then on to moving, removing the tail planes as well. So the, the fins come off quite easily. They have a set of fillet panels that attach the fin to the uh, horizontal stabiliser or the tail plane. And once those are off, there's also a couple of uh, access panels on the outsides of the fins uh, which allow you to gain access to undo the nuts and bolts that attach the fin to the horizontal stabiliser. The rudders only really hold on to the fins by the hinges, so that's a very simple and straightforward removal of the, the rudders. There's also a control rod that comes through the tailplane out up to the, the rudder as well, so that of, of course has to be disconnected to get the rudder off. So we remove the rudder and then the fin, and that enables us to, uh, to get access to remove the elevator. Again, the elevator's held on by the hinge points, so that's quite a simple uh, access to actually get to those to remove the uh, the, the elevators from the aircraft. So once the elevators, fins and rudders are removed it gives us good access to actually remove the tailplane of the aircraft. So the horizontal stabiliser or tailplane uh, as it's referred to it is quite a, a simple piece of uh, engineering and it, it's just bolted to the aircraft by eight bolts surprisingly. So when you consider all the strain on the aircraft in corkscrews and manoeuvres all of that is transmitted through the tailplane to the aircraft just by eight bolts and four of those bolts are attaching the tailplane to itself. So the tailplane is, is in two separate sections, a port and a starboard, and they bolt together in the centre of the fuselage by a, a set of castings with bolts through. And then the whole tailplane as a unit attaches to the formers on the aircraft by four bolts, so two on the port side and two on the starboard side. So to remove the tailplane, the first thing you have to do is take the tail oleo out, so the, the real wheel oleo shock absorber unit. Um, that drops out the bottom of the, uh, the aircraft. It's only held in by one large uh, pin effectively, uh, which attaches it through to the, uh, the fuselage of the aircraft. So once you remove that pin, the oleo drops out. It drops out from um, with its spigot into the tailplane which uh, stops it from moving around when you're taxiing around. So once that spig is out of its uh, retaining flange, then the, the oleo drops out quite neatly uh, and you can move on to actually disassembling the, uh, the tailplane. So the, the first part of that is uh, the retaining flange which sits on the top of the tailplane. That's bolted through to the tailplane and it's basically the spigot from the top of the oleo sits inside a bushing in there. Um, so when you remove that, it would, it would have allowed the oleo to, to drift around in the in the fuselage. So you remove that bushing and then you get access um, also inside of the tailplanes um, through a couple of uh, access panels to, to get to the heads of the bolts that attach the tailplane to the fuselage. And you can also start to remove the four bolts 
that attach the, the tailplanes to each other, so the ports and the starboard parts of the tailplane. So to remove the tailplanes you um, put some uh, basically trestles underneath the, the tailplanes themselves uh, because once you start undoing the nuts and bolts they of course have the ability then to, to drop down to, um, to sag um, within the fuselage. So you must uh, use, we used our hydraulic um, platforms underneath uh, each tailplane just to take the weight of them. We can then start to undo the nuts and bolts, uh, withdraw the bolts and then the tailplanes themselves just basically pull out of the fuselage. Um, the port pulls to the port, the starboard pulls to the starboard and they just withdraw from the fuselage. They're not an overly heavy item so it's a, a four-man lift um, so once they're out of the fuselage to get them off the, uh, the hydraulic platforms it's just a case of a person in each corner lifting it off. They're, they're more problematic through their size as opposed to their weight. So when we remove those from the aircraft we then store them on the, uh, the egg box storage units and they're completely out of the way of the aircraft then that enables us to actually start to look at removing the, the rear fuselage part of the lank. So to remove the tailplanes the uh, the tail of the aircraft is trestled so that's the the low tail trestle that we fit to uh, remove the tail wheel, remove the tail oleo um, and the tailplanes. Once we get on to actually removing the, the rear part of the fuselage we had to have a separate trestle trolley produced. Now we looked at different ways of, of doing this uh, we went down the route of looking at some tornado uh, ground equipment uh, which never really came to fruition so we looked at what we, we actually had at East Kirkby what we could probably adapt to do the job and we had a, a Type H bomb trolley which was due for restoration it had originally been used as a, a boat um, trolley basically a boat trailer um, it had been adapted for that after the war so when we got hold of it uh, shipped it to, uh, to East Kirkby and we actually took away all the parts that made it into the boat trailer that it was being used and we were really looking to restore it back to a, uh, a tall boy bomb trolley. So these Type H trolleys were used um, for the, the large 8,000 pounder cookies, the double cookie, uh, used for the tall boy and the Grand Slam earthquake bombs as well. So it's, a, it's quite a sizeable trailer, quite a heavy duty trailer. Um, and it's just the right sort of length that we would need for the, uh, the fuselage um, trestle trolleys. So we uh, looked at adapting it to actually use to withdraw the rear part of the fuselage from the aircraft and it was a perfect fit really size wise. So we, we developed uh, the trestles that would be needed to go on it and we borrowed the trestle beams as well which is the top part of the trestle that meets the fuselage. We borrowed those from the Battle of Rhythm Flight at RAF Coningsby. So with the production of the, the trestles on the trolley uh, the next thing really to do was to work out how we're actually going to get the trolley underneath the lank. So obviously with the uh, the tail trestle already in position to then try to get the uh, the trailer trolley underneath the aircraft to, to trestle it it would be fairly difficult so we decided that the only way really to do it would be to to lift the rear fuselage of the aircraft up um, in an arc lift remove the the tail trestle and then bring the uh, trestle trailer into position so we managed to do this rather than bringing a crane in managed to do this with the teleporter that we uh, we borrow from the, the neighbouring farm and Neil on the teleporter is a, a dab hand using it he's, a, he's had many many years experience on the teleporters we use him for all our propellers and our engine work as well and lifting them in and out of the aircraft so with the uh, the tail of the the aircraft lifted an arc lift enabled us to uh, to push the uh, trestle trolley underneath the aircraft into the correct position because the trestles have to trestle on particular formers in the fuselage so the stronger formers so it can bear the weight of the, uh, the fuselage onto the trestles. With the trestle trolley into position we then had to uh, lower the rear part of the fuselage down onto the trolley and we could strap over and uh, really fasten it down to the trolley to make sure that the fuselage wouldn't move uh, when it's trestled. Once we're happy with the, the strapping down to the, the trestle trolley, we then looked at the next step, which was going to be um, undoing all of the nuts and bolts around the transportation joint. So the transportation joint is effectively just above the H2S, so the blister underneath the aircraft, just aft of the D um, or the H um, on the, the lettering on the side of the aircraft. There's about 240 nuts and bolts that hold the, the rear fuselage section to the mid fuselage section. So they all had to be undone, of 
course the the front and the rear of the the aircraft trestled to make sure it didn't move and to, to carry the weight on the trestles with all the nuts and bolts undone um, the really the next thing was to check the interior of the aircraft make sure all the wiring was free and um, all the, the hydraulic lines uh, pitostatic um, lines all of the electricals uh, the flying controls so the the rudder elevator controls come down the port side of the aircraft on the inside so they all, all had to be disconnected at the transport joint um, and then nuts and bolts undone a quick check around the transport joint for any sealant that might be holding it together uh, and then the next step was just to uh, withdraw the the trolley pull the trolley away from the front of the aircraft um, and with it it brought the uh, the rear part of the fuselage as well extremely happy with how the fuselage split actually worked so that's one of those rare times when a plan on paper really does work in practice without any fine readjustment so with the withdrawing of the uh, the rear fuselage the split of the fuselage from the uh, the main aircraft the next plan really then is to start making a jig from that so we have a company coming in to to look at the uh, the fuselage faces the transport joint and various parts of the rear fuselage section that we can actually attach to for the jig um, and that jig will hold the rear fuselage section in it to allow us to remove all the rivets and skins uh, and break down that rear fuselage section, replace all the rivets, um, assess it, inspect it uh, for airworthiness, replace, restore anything that isn't airworthy to be built back up again into a completely airworthy section. So this is part of the work we're doing to, to go around the aircraft in bite-sized achievable pieces each winter to eventually end up with a completely airworthy aircraft. So a quick look around the, uh, the fuselage, as you see it now separated. This is the, uh, the transport joint, and the, there's two uh, faces, the rear face and the, the front face. So one of our concerns was whether there would be any corrosion between the two faces. Uh, on first inspection, the joint looks uh, quite good. Uh, the, it was painted black in the factory uh, when it was produced, and hopefully that paint has, has preserved the structure and uh, reduced any possible corrosion that there might be uh, between the two faces. You can see all the holes, of course, that run around the face, just show the, the sheer number of uh, nuts and bolts that join the two. See all the, the stringers as well that obviously terminate at the, the transport joint. These have all uh, got small castings on them, uh, which are the terminations at the end of the stringer, which of course will all have to be inspected. On the, the forward face as well, you can see it, it was painted as well at the same time. So hopefully that will have done the same job and, and preserved that face as well. Looking forward, you're looking forward towards the cockpit. Straight in front of you there is the, uh, the H2S, the top of the uh, the scanner where it sits. You can see in the floor there are all the uh, the small intercostals, which run um, forward to back, forward to aft. The uh, the pitot-static tube there just hanging out, and the flying controls that on the port side there hanging out. So the entire structure in the rear will have to be in inspected and uh, all the rivets replaced next year when we come to do the, uh, the rear fuselage restoration work so you can just see the the sheer number of small parts and rivets that there are within this uh, this section of the uh, the fuselage so you can see how, how big a job it's going to be when we approach it next year so the, the hole that the uh, tailplane obviously fits through this uh, reduces the size of the the formers they split when it comes to the tailplane Underneath uh, you'll see the, the hole where the oleo goes through, just underneath the tailplanes there. So the tailplanes here are on the, what we call egg boxes, which are the, the, um, the blocks, items that the, the tailplanes are sat on. Tail oleo just here as well. On the, the top of the oleo as we look at it is a, a small unit called an anti-shim unit. So that actually stops the, the tail wheel from shimmying as you're, you're going down the runway. You see on the uh, tailplane units here, the, the green pit obviously is within the fuselage, black bit is outside of the fuselage, and you see on the end of the, uh, the tailplane there are the, the cast parts that uh, are the, uh, the adjoining faces from port to starboard tailplane. And that bolt on the top there is the one that attaches the tailplane to the, the fuselage former. The item with the uh, the white uh, rag that's hanging off it is where the fin attaches. So that's the outboard end of the uh, tailplane. And we have the H2S Perspex cupola here. So that obviously bolts underneath the fuselage entirely perspex in its construction made of about three pieces and glued together. You see the bulkhead in there 
that's to stop you from being able to see inside of the cupola to see the, the radar dish itself. And the clear part at the back of it is for the uh, the ident lights underneath the aircraft. So all the engines have been stripped to their cowlings. They're all sat here, each engine individually, all the spinners on the racking as well. And on, on this rack here we have some of the parts that are taken out of the fuselage to enable the uh, the fuselage to be split. So you'll see all the, the nuts and bolts from the uh, the transport joint there. And on the right hand side you can see the, the small plate that holds the top of the tail oleo in place. There's some electrical covers. And underneath there you have the, uh, the large bar that uh, attaches port to starboard elevator, the fillet panels. The step up on top of the uh, the H2S blister, and some of the uh, the fillet panels as well for the uh, the tailplane, and uh, one of the uh, the handhold bars as well that run through the fuselage. Thank you very much for uh, watching the video, and uh, we hope to uh, give you some more footage as we uh, progress through the winter. Uh, thank you very much for your support. You can join the Rivet Club uh, for more updates by email. Um, and you can keep an eye on the YouTube channel. So thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe and like the video.